Good morning. How are you doing today? It's a pleasure having you here. We have Stephen Ojo here in the building. It's a pleasure having you here. How was your weekend? We're going to wait for others to join us, but of course, we will not wait too long. Today, we have good information for you. And of course, it has to do with trading and how to become a better trader. So how was your weekend, Mr. Stephen Ojo? Hopefully, you get to reply, which would show that the audio level is good to go from your end. Okay, beautiful. I can see your comment. You said, good morning, sir. Awesome, thank you. How was your weekend? Let me just use that as a confirmation since this is a question. And of course, it, uh, it needs a reply. How was your weekend? I remember you were with us last week for our sessions. Okay, and you said your weekend was good. How about yours? Also, mine was also good. Mine was a bit of, uh, I went about, up and about. And of course, I did some market review for last week's trading. And, you know, generally just did what I normally do during weekends, rest, right? Awesome. Yes, uh, Mr. Kanayo Okonkwo, you're welcome as well. How are you doing? It's a pleasure having you guys here. And of course, we know how we do things here as both of you are uh, usually uh, were here last week, right? So what we're going to be doing starting from our session today, right? Because of course, today is for the live market analysis. Where we're going to be looking at charts on a live uh, basis and then we'll do some discussions here and there. Right. So for this live market analysis, don't forget. Don't forget it is brought to you by 10 trade. Right. This market analysis is brought to you by 10 trade. This is the broker for you. OK, I can see seven or just said, yeah, felt good about last week training. So I felt to join this week will be nice too. Awesome. Great. Let me read that again and let me elaborate a bit. Um, you said, yeah, you felt good about last week's training. Thank you. That was awesome. It's always good when you gain value. That means that you back here, you want to gain some more. And then you said, you felt to join this week will be nice too. Awesome. Please, apart from joining, you need to practice. Everybody ensure that you have the 10 trade uh, MT5 demo or live so that you can start doing some form of practice either with the demo or with real money. Okay, and we have Babs or guests here. I hope I pronounced that so name or guests. Babs, we have Babs here with us, just joined us. You're welcome, right? And of course, uh, I've seen your name here for the first time. So, as we said earlier, this is the live market analysis with 10 trade, and you are all welcome. It's a pleasure having you here. And please, you are going to do something for us. As we always say, 10 Trade has something, always has something in store for traders, right? Because we know that you need, you need, to, it's a thing of need and not want. You need to be trading the proper way in order to be making profit, to be making pips. It's all about the pips. Once you can control the pips, then you can make money. So this, um, is something we want you to do. Please, if you are not following us on our social media handles, please do well to follow us on the social media handles now. As you can see, um, I'm going to post something for everybody to see. I'm going to post the Instagram, the Facebook, and the Twitter handles, right? I'm going to do that now. So once I do that, you will see the links over there. Do well to follow us. I'm not sure that Bob is following us. But please do well to follow us, right? Like on the uh, comments you see. And of course, if you have a question, ask a question there. Let's create some form of engagement. And then also, we have the YouTube channel for 10 Trade. I repeat, we have the YouTube channel for 10 Trade. Enough for you to follow us, subscribe, like the videos, comment on the videos. This here is the link. I just posted that as well. That is the link for everybody in order to what? In order to join us on the Facebook uh, front, 
right? I repeat, it's better to join us on the, on the, sorry, on the YouTube, right? So that you can watch the past recordings. All of these discussions are going to be recorded and then will be posted on the um, um, YouTube channel. So you can watch the past recordings from last week, two weeks ago, and so on. And even today's one would also be posted shortly. For those just joining us again, you're welcome. We have um, IJ Michael, you were with us last week as well. It's a pleasure having you guys. Now, we're going to do something because, you know, at times they say, as the spirit leads, right? They say, as the spirit leads, we're going to do something now. We're going to ask you this quick question before we continue with the slide market. Because for this slide market, it is a thing of us um, um, looking at the charts. So we're going to strictly be looking at the charts sooner than later. But I want to ask you guys this question. What issues do you think you are facing? What issues do you uh, uh, seem to be undergoing that seems to be slowing down your progress in the business of trading, trading the financial markets? I just thought to ask, right? So as I've asked that question, hopefully those that are here that have been trading for a little while could also just chip in and then tell us one or two things that they have been struggling with. And of course, we would help you to improve. That's why 10 Trade is here. So don't forget once again, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like and comment a couple of the videos, and then also post the webinar advert, right? This webinar information that you guys saw, right? Post it up. I'm also gonna do a copy and paste here so that you guys can see it and you can also know what to copy up. So post the webinar advert on your WhatsApp status, your Facebook, your Instagram, your, tel your, your Telegram, your Twitter, in LinkedIn, whatever social media platform that you are on, post it there, right? And meaning that you're inviting people to come and learn as well for free. After doing that, send your screenshot, right, of what you have done, following us on the YouTube and all the social media handles, comments and all, do a screenshot and send it to your account manager. I hope everybody here knows the account managers. For those who are joining us, once again, you're welcome, Farouk, Rafiu, and uh, Victor, Alicia, you're all welcome. So I hope you guys know your account managers. Please, if you don't know your account managers, let us know, right? Let us know. You can provide your uh, client ID and we'll connect you to your account manager. So please, guys, quickly, post up the information and then send the screenshots as a proof to your account officer on WhatsApp. Don't forget to include your full name and your 10 trade ID, very, very important. Please, if you do not have a 10 trade account, please kindly get back to the person who invited you. I repeat, get back to the person who uh, invited you as this information will be requested from your account manager. Please take note of that. Right, that's why I said earlier, if you don't have an account uh, uh, manager and you have an account, send your account number, your, your 10 trade client ID, right? Send it to us and it will connect you to your account manager. And then also anybody who completes this little task that we have given you, you know, you are registered, you followed us on social media, you are uh, uh, also posted this on your status for people to join, uh, 10 trade would give you a surprise gift reward. So if you've done that last week, kindly contact your account manager as well and 10 trade will do something for you. Let me know as well if you have done that and you haven't received anything from 10 trade and then we'll work something out. I also have a gift that I usually give to traders as well. And of course, I can't give you physical cash, but I can as well give you time. Now I asked a question not too long ago but nobody answered. And the question once again is, what issues are you facing? Let me tell you guys something. The best way for you to learn, I repeat, the best way for you to learn is to ask questions. And of course, they say that there's no question that is a stupid question. Ask your questions and let us help you. A quick disclaimer for everybody, the information that we are giving you is not to be used as a form of trading signal, or rather to be used for educational purposes. I repeat, rather to be used for educational purposes, right? So guys, kindly post all this information on your status, on your LinkedIn, on your 
telegram your facebook instagram right let's fill up this class let's have more people join us to take advantage of this free live market analysis session so a quick disclaimer as we're saying please note that information given to you should not be used as a form of signal or rather for educational purposes also note that trading uh the financial market is a leverage market, it's a leverage business. So that means that you can easily make plenty of money and you can easily lose your funds as well. So always ensure that you minimize your losses and you maximize your profit. Very, very key, very, very important. Great. So now let's do this. I want to show you guys something quickly. For those that are here newly, you are most likely a new or struggling trader. And of course, that is the problem that people are having. We asked earlier what issues are you having and nobody answered. No problem. I'll continue to dish out the information. You are meant to make use of it, not just being the session and then taking notes. But you are also meant to practice. So in a few minutes, we're going to cross over to the chat. I'm going to explain to you the chat with respect to what happened last week, what happened last week, and of course, what we're expecting this week. And also as a quick one, also let us know how your trading was last week. Did you trade last week? Did you trade on the demo account? Did you trade on the live account? Let us know how your trading was last week and then we'll see how we can help you out at the end of the day. So you all want to be profitable traders. Let me ask this guy, let me ask you guys a question, please. And I need your feedback. If I don't get any feedback for this particular question I'm going to ask, Right, I promise I will not ask you any question. I'll do this out the information I have and I'll continue. Let's try this. This is the question. Right, I repeat, this is the question. How many of you want to be profitable? It's a simple question. I don't need your feedback from the comment section so that I'm sure that we're together. Number one, I can see somebody has already replied. How many of you want to be profitable, want to be a consistent, profitable trader? Okay, you can see two people have replied. That means that only two people out of all those that are here want to be beautiful. Now we're having more people reply. Awesome. So our first comment we had was from Zakia. She said me. Victor Elisha said me. Zakia said again, 100% Zakia. Thank you. Meaning that you are trying to, like you are declaring it, that I am going to be profitable. That's what you guys are doing now with the comments that are coming in. Seven just said I do. Farouk. Farouk. Rafu said me, Sunday, Obasi said, sure. Now we ask the question. <laughs> now I'm laughing because I did that on, on purpose. Now we asked the question earlier, but nobody replied. No problem. The question again, just in case you want to reply, was what issues, what problems, what are the frustrations that you are having in this business of trading? Right? So if you want to reply, no problem. So now look at it this way. A lot of traders that are struggling traders, they do not have the winning mentality. Someone that has a winning mentality will know easily that when you have losses, you are going to continue, you're going to continue, and you're going to continue. As a matter of fact, when you have those losses, you might have like six, seven losses back to back. One winner, one winner can easily be the profit that will take care of those losses. So you have to have the winning mentality. Zach like said, not really sure. Okay, no problem. If you have... If you don't know the problems or issues you're having, then no problem. So from what we're talking about here on this screenshot, if you realize the problem you're having, then let us know. Most of us don't have a winning mentality, which has to do with psychology, the psychology of trading. Lots of traders also, they don't manage risk. They don't know how to manage risk, meaning that they don't know how to calculate for the volume, for the lot size, which is a big problem and also develop strategies. Developing strategy has to do with market analysis. Everybody needs a strategy. Lots of traders have actually been using too many strategies and there is no strategy that is 100%. So why would you be changing from one to the other, one to the other? And I'm sure we are talking to some of you here. Trading plan and trading journal. A lot of traders do not have this. I repeat, a lot of traders do not have a trading plan and do not have a trading journal and then do not know how to avoid unnecessary losses. These are the key things that we all need to know in order to become a profitable trader at the end of the day. Very key. So what we're going to be doing now, we're going to be crossing over to the chat. 
looking at the fundamentals and the technical of trading, we're going to be combining the two, combining the two of them together. So as a quick step-by-step -step procedure, please guys, write this down or do a screenshot of this. Very, very important. Okay, I can see one or two comments coming in. Uh, Zakios said difficult. Now Zakios can remember. You first of all said not really sure, but then now you said difficulty in assurance or reading. What do you mean by difficulty in assurance? That in assurance part, I'm not really sure what you're trying to say. Difficulty of reading the market. Well, um, we're going to do that this week again. We're going to look at the workshop, beginner's workshop that will talk about how to read the market like an open book for profitable trading, where you're going to be using the likes of price, action, support, and resistance. Stephen so, you know, just said, I've been trading with demo account for about a month now. I've been getting better weekly, so no problem for now. Just want to learn more and get better before funding my account. Awesome. Stephen so, you know, I would advise you do not stay on demo for too long. As you have been doing this, uh, as you have been doing this on a demo, right? And it's working for you. Put your knowledge to the test and go live. You can open up a small live account. I'm not sure how much you want to fund your account with. But you can also let me know or let your account manager know or let the person that reached out to you know uh, for advice on how much to fund so that you'll be able to properly calculate your risk and so on based on your account funding. Okay, great. I would also reveal to you, or let me tell you guys something now, an offering for me, right? First of all, 10 trade, uh, the management, they said, if you fund a minimum of $100, you can easily get connected to the market analysis signals group on Telegram. And of course, that is for $100. And if you fund up to $500 and above, you get a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute session with myself, where we would sit down together on Zoom like this, but it should just be one-on-one. -on -one. We'll sit down together and then we we'll would look into your trading, the issues you are having, we'll give you the solutions to those problems, We'll give you the step-by-step -step procedure. We'll give you as much information that you are needed, how to work with a plan, a journal, how to implement it, especially. It's not about knowing information, but it's about implementing the information, okay? So please, guys, I want to believe I stayed a bit on this screenshot so that you can quickly do your uh, writing or do your screenshot based on this. So now we're going to look at the charts, right? We're going to look at the charts now. And this chat we're going to be discussing now is going to be based on what happened last week. First, we're going to look at what happened last week and then see how we can take advantage, take advantage of this week. That's what we try to do as traders. I repeat, that's what we try to do as traders. We try to take advantage, meaning that whatever is happening in the market, it is for us to take advantage. Right? Because the market could be going up, the market could be going down. It's not for us to be. Uh, uh, too strict on ourselves and say, no, the market is going up, it must go up, it must go up. No. If you notice that it's going down, you can take advantage of it and then make money. And that's what we want to show you. Oh, sorry. Okay, great. So now that's what I want to show you now. So quickly, I'm going to explain to you guys what happened last week in this market. And if you can see in front of us, this is the Euro USD one hour, the Euro USD one hour time frame. This is it here, Euro USD one hour. And one thing about the one hour time frame is that it is good for intraday trading, right? Not necessarily scalping. I uh, wouldn't advise to rush into scalping, especially if you are new or you are struggling. Scalping majorly should be for those that know the handling of what they're doing because uh, uh, scalping is like driving a car fast. So you must be able to learn how to drive a car slow as a learner driver. And then from there, you can start you know, speeding on the highway, depending on you, because scalping is a bit fast. So a quick one on what happened last week. So as we said, we're going to talk about what happened last week, and we're going to use that to buttress on what we're looking out for today. So looking at what happened last week, um, okay, so guys, sorry. Let me quickly put up a comment here. I can see somebody won't be able to hear us because the audio is turned off, and that's Mr. Israel Bulus. Let me just put... Uh, kindly enable your Zoom via, uh, sorry, enable your audio, sorry, enable your audio via Zoom, right? Okay, beautiful. I can see I've gotten it already. Uh, is it here, Israel? 
Oh, yeah, aha, great. I can see Mr. Izzo has gotten it because I was about to type this and you have already worked on that. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Izzo. Great, so now let's continue what we have for you, right? So we said that this is Euro USD from the one hour, one hour time frame. So I always like when we look at the market from like the intraday perspective. So from last week, we're going to look cover last week and we're going to cover this week. So from last week, we had this area here that acted as support. As you can see, the price went up and then it broke out over here. It broke out and then dropped lower. And then this area here that acted as support, look at what happened. At this point over here, it was supposed to act as resistance but it did not quite get there. This is the area of interest. As you can see, we have drawn horizontal lines on the chart. I repeat, we have drawn horizontal lines on the chart. Okay, thank you, Mr. Israel said done. Yes, I noticed that also. Guys, also try to invite those that you know would be able to take advantage of this information. Because one thing I always like to say is that whenever we conduct this live market analysis, we want everybody without an exception exception we want everybody to do something we want everybody to take screenshots of the chart and then pay attention to them because if you had looked at this one that we talked about as you can see on this one you wanted to sell here price didn't quite get there but it got close to it over here and what happened it turned around and went back all the ways to the lows over here it went back all the ways to the lows at about 7th of february Right, so you'd have gotten your entry. You can see this entry by marked down here. It matches 9th of February. So you could have gotten your entry 9th of February to sell here and then to go further down. The only thing that some traders might have been saying is that it didn't quite get to this point here. It didn't quite get to that point. It was pretty much shy of it over here. Let me clean up the chart so that you can see better what we're talking about. You can see it acted as support here. For those that might not know, support is when the price is going up and then resistance is where the price starts to go down. From here, support as it went up, you can see from here, it broke out at this point here and then didn't quite get back to this area. But I'm going to tell you what we're expecting. This is what happened last week, by the way. I'm going to tell you what, what we're expecting this week in a bit so that you can try to take advantage. Please, we all need to try to take advantage. When we do things together, it is going to help us to play straight the proper way, play straight to make profit, and of course, learn how to play straight ourselves. Very key, very, very important. Now, looking at this GBP USD, looking at GBP USD, this was even a much, much better trade than the Euro USD. Why? You can see this is the same thing over here, which signifies what GBP USD H1 for one hour. You can see the trend is a downtrend, right? You can see the trend is a downtrend. As the trend is a downtrend, look at what we had over here. We have support, that support over here. And then once it broke out, it broke out with this big candle here. The other side now automatically turns to resistance. And then look at what happened. The market went down in this manner and then did some zigzagging here. But look at what happened eventually. The market came back and hit that area. That means that for last week, GBP USD would have been a better trade than Euro USD from what we can see. You would have entered here to sell and look at what happened. It went all the way down and then it bouncing off this area. Look very well. This area happened to have been a support area before, but it seems to be bouncing off here. If I'd gotten my entry here, this is where I would like to get out ultimately. Or worst case, you can call this here. You can call this TP1 as some traders normally do. You can call this TP1 while you call this TP2, right? Why well, you call this TP2? And this was from last week, right? Remember, this is from last week. We're going to first of all talk about what happened last week. And then from what happened last week, we will now talk about what to expect. I repeat, we'll look at what to expect in the market, right? Going into this week. This week just started. And of course, we already know that we knew with a new week holds new opportunities for us to be able to seize, to be able to take advantage of to make money at the end of the day from, right? So you can see what happened over here. This also is information from the week, last week, that is, let's continue to the next one from last week, NZD USD. One thing I would also tell you, if you look very well at the charts that we're, you know, taking a look at. If you have any charts of interest that you want us to look at as well, kindly indicate, right, in the comment section, and then we'll see how we can look at it. You can also pick out the time frame 
That is why this is called the live market analysis. In this chart over here, you can see the trend is a down one, right? As the trend is a down one, if you look very well here, we had like support, we have support, we have support, but price never go back to that area. You can see price never go back to that area. And this was from last week. That means that for NZD USD, one hour, most likely you will not have gotten any trade. And the truth now is what the truth now is that it is not all the time that you get trading opportunities. I repeat, it is not all the time that you will get trading opportunities. Now, let's just look at the remaining. I have a bit lined up here. And I can see Mr. Zakios has just posted AUD JPY. We're going to come to that in a bit. So this is the AUD USD, right? Look at the AUD USD, this area here, right? That acted as uh, support in the past. Look at what happened when it came back. Acted as resistance, kept acted as resistance. Even though it got breached over here, it still acted as resistance. You would have just have love for price to get back to this point here. So you can see that there are opportunities. There are usually opportunities right in front of you. There were opportunities last week, and there will be opportunities this week. Hopefully, there will be opportunities this week, right? Because we cannot predict what the market is going to do. It is forced to be able to react we should be reaction traders the market does something and then we react to it accordingly and that's how we are supposed to be trading the market this is AD USD. let me quickly breeze through the remaining i have and then we'll look at mr zakios AD jpy if you guys have any instruments of choice do let us know and then we can talk about it first thing you must also always look at what is the trend in this market the trend is up as the trend is up it simply means that it is advisable to start buying, to look for where to buy. For you want to buy, you remember our support and resistance. Here was what? Support, support. Here was resistance, resistance. Price broke out here. As you can see, as it broke out here, it came out here to act as what? To act as resistance. From here, look at this. We have another low level here. If I draw this sorry, horizontal line here, which is support, I can see. Support is where price went up, price went up. They didn't quite get there here, but it went up and blasted up. If you guys remember, I don't know that you guys are traders, you've been trading for a bit. This information here, as you can see, this rush up here was as a result of the first Friday, which is the first NFP data release. If I remember very well, the NFP data release was about 507K as opposed to 193K. I mean, that was a very, very massive uh, deviation. And then the market, you know, it did this thing, it reacted in a volatile manner and just pushed all the way up. But then as you pushed all the way up, this is from 3rd of February, right? Which is the upper week. So we're looking at the formation from last week. Look at what happened last week. Let me clean up this chart first of all and show you something. You can see this was resistance, resistance, resistance. We had a bunch of resistance at the beginning. This broke out, as it broke out, it has now turned that resistance to support. Look at how many times they kept on respecting this area here. Even though we're now having some breaches, you still had this area here that respected. And look at where the price is getting to, to this point here. You can see as it gets to this point here, it's simply because we had an area here of resistance. We have another one here of resistance and so on. So these are the things that we're looking at here based on what happened last week. That will give us clues that, oh, so this was what happened last week. So this is what we should be expecting this week as well. Great. I can see a comment here, and uh, IJ Michael is also giving us XAUUSD, which is gold, right? And of course, gold is also on the list of what I have over here. We'll talk about as we talk about that as well. So now moving on, we had the Bitcoin, the Almighty Bitcoin, right? Let me click on it. We had the Almighty Bitcoin, and this is what we had, right? From last week, from last week it was a bit messy, right? Because you can see we had this sideways action inside this. Uh, level that we have drawn but notwithstanding notwithstanding price did this thing and then if you look over here this is um resistance 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 you can see as price is reacting to resistance but then price acted here as support he acted here as support but then look at what happened it eventually broke out and then went back to this area here of what went back to this area here of resistance meaning that you'd have sold over here and then this is what is happening now. This is what, oh sorry, this is what happened last week. When you would have sold at this area here, you'd have made a whole lot of pips, 
from last week. Don't forget, once again, I need to remind you guys, we are first of all talking about what happened last week, how last week's trading was, and then we're going to use that to look at um, uh, what to expect this week, what to expect this week. We can do that in a nice and simple manner that you guys can do screenshots of the chart. We can as well duplicate this chart, right, for you to be able to follow up on what we're talking about. So a few more arrow card, look at arrow card over here. Without looking at much, this was support, this was support. It broke out over here at this point here. And then it came back and acted as resistance and it went all the way down, right? I'm sure you might be saying, oh, this is looking a bit straightforward, looking a bit easy. And of course, that's because of my own experience. Whatever chart I'm looking at, I've already been able to pin out or pinpoint one or two key things with respect to that, all right? I repeat, being able to pinpoint one or two things uh, with respect to that. So this is what happened last week as well for AeroCAD. And then gold, this is what happened for gold last week. We're gonna talk about gold last week and also gold this week because of uh, a person that asked about gold. If you look very well, here was an area of support and then price broke out here, right? So also from 3rd of February as a result of the key non-farm payroll outcome, the 507, a bit of 507 or not 501 or 517, I'm not sure. But over the 500K marker, as opposed to 193, we had this big candle down, as we had this big candle down, that means that naturally this area should now act as resistance. On top here was support, under here should act as resistance. And then look at what happened, price didn't get there. And it went back to the lows over here, it went back to the lows over here. It has been doing what has been dancing because this is dancing over here. This dancing format also is trying to tell us that price is ranging. There is a, an equilibrium state between the buyers and the sellers on this particular chart, right? So this is what happened last week, meaning that last week price got back to this point. It didn't get back here. We're going to come back to gold as well and talk about what you know. Uh, we are expecting for the new week. And then finally, GBP, JPY, this is also as a result, I repeat, it's also as a result of my own findings, right? So um, for those that have commented on this, we're going to look at uh, yours as well. Looking at this one here for the GBP USD, it's a downtrend, as you can see, but it's a downtrend. Where are the areas where we want to sell? You can see the areas where we can enter to sell are over here, right? This acted as support in the past, acted as support in the past, acted as resistance here. And then, um, ha, sorry, I was about to show you what is going to happen, what most likely is going to happen next. But as a result of last week's trading, which is around this area here, let me just circle it around this area here, price didn't do much, it's more or less moved sideways, right? It's more or less moved sideways over here. So this is the GPP, JPY, one hour time frame, right? I hope you guys have gotten a little value, at least a little value based on what happened last week. I hope you guys have gotten a little value based on what happened last week, because based on what happened last week is what we can also use to determine what might happen this week. We're gonna use the information, this is what we're doing. We're using the information from the history to, pre to predict the future, um, sorry. We're using information from the history to predict the future. I repeat, to predict the future, because this, Business of trading is also known as um, a speculative market where you're speculating this is what's going to happen next and so on and so forth. So let's go back to Euro USD. Don't worry, for those that, uh, that commented, I'm going to talk about that as well. But now I want to look at what to expect. These are like the trading opportunities that we are here to talk about. What are we expecting this week? Before we even do that, aha. Who knows? Let me ask this question. Before we do this analysis over here, who can tell us what we're supposed to be doing before we start jumping to this analysis of this chart that we have in front of us? Let me find out whether some of us have been paying attention or some of us have just been here and then multitasking, doing other things because we talked about something much earlier. I need your feedback on this. I need your feedback on this. It's always good for us to give feedback is a form of interaction and then to show that you guys are still here, you're not sleepy, you're comfortable and so on. Beautiful. Now I can see that you guys are following. Sunday Obasi said, check the news. Zach said, check the news. Casey said, check news. Uh, Zach said, Forex Street. Well, it's more of Forex Factory. 
uh, Israel Blue said, news, beautiful. So I'm gonna switch over, it's a switch over. I'm gonna switch over to my um, uh, Forex factory. I'm gonna switch over to the Forex factory now where we can easily, easily see this uh, Forex factory in front of us. So this Forex factory in front of us is based on this week. Excuse me. This Forex factory in front of us is based on information from this week. You can see Sunday, February 12th, February 12th, that was yesterday. And today happens to be Monday, February the 13th. And you can see all the news that we had for February the 13th. These are the key data, by the way. That's why you're only seeing red. I did some filtering over here where you can click on this funnel and filter it to give you the parameters that you want. I don't want to be seeing all of them. So based on this week, right? Monday, February 13th, we have the 8.30 a.m. news coming up for Chef High Impact News. CPI, CPI stands for the Consumer Price Index. I repeat, it stands for the Consumer Price Index. Looking at what we have in front of us, right? Based on the news. In order to interpret the news, we usually use the color. If this color is green, as you can see, it's green. It simply means that we are gonna be buying. If this color here is red, it simply means that we're going to be selling. If the color here is black, black means neutral. So no matter what, you could either be having a, gray, a green uh, a figure here, a red figure here, or a gray figure here, which means neutral. You have that, and then you can use that to, uh, you understand this, and then you can use it to your advantage. So these are all the news coming out tomorrow, Tuesday. We're going to be having pounds, which is the claimant count change and we're having the big one the big one in cpi cpi is for the usd you can see i'm saying a big one because the cpi indeed is big and what it tends to do based on the aftermath is something that i would just advise traders not to venture into especially if you do not have the experience especially if you don't have the information on how to trade the market the proper way Right, so we've just breezed through the news that we have over here, and then from the news after pairing, after pairing with your uh, uh, technicals, after pairing these fundamentals with the technicals, then you are good to go to place trades. I repeat, then you are good to go to place trades at the end of the day. So now let's do something. Let's cross back to the uh, chart. We're going to cross back to the chart. As you can see, we don't have any data. Once again, we don't have any data coming out for the US dollar. And this is the US dollar arrows over here. But then naturally, looking at this, your area of interest. Look, guys, listen to this, please. Do a screenshot. This is recorded also. You can also watch this on the replay. Guys, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining once again. And of course, thank you for inviting your friends. Don't forget, as you are here, try to invite your friends. Try to invite your enemies, try to invite as many people as possible by posting this information of this training on your Instagram, on your WhatsApp status, on your WhatsApp status especially, do a screenshot and then send your evidence to your account manager that would give you a surprise gift at the end of the day. I already mentioned the one-on-one -on -one 30 minute session that you can take advantage of. It will be done with me, by the way, we would help you to structure, structure. That's what everybody needs. We're gonna help you to structure your trading based on like the lives of uh, where to enter, why to enter and so on. So once you understand all of these things and a lot more, you understand your risk, you understand the psychological aspect of the business. That is what the one-on-one -on -one session is going to entail by the way, just giving you a bit of tweezer, a, a teaser. So if you're interested in that, all you have to do is to what is to fund your account with a minimum of $500 for the one-on-one -on -one 30 minute session, fund your account with a minimum of $500, you'll be eligible. And then we can have something together, yourself and myself. And for those that might want to take it up the next level, if you fund like a minimum of $1,000, I will not be the only one to attend to you. Also another person, and that is the person of Mr. Victor, the country director of 10 Trade, will be there to also give you a session. He's also a trader. I've known him for years and it's totally good. He's awesome, by the way, right? So look at this one now, as we're talking about the trade opportunities for this week, 
for this USD, price can do what? Remember, it's a downtrend. If you look very well, it's a downtrend from what we have right in front of us. But that means we are strictly looking forward to selling. Where would you like to sell? I'd like to see price come back here, you get your sell position, and then you take it back down. My only issue now is that this area is a bit too tight, right? This area is a bit too tight, especially for getting tangible take profit. So I would prefer to see price come back to this area here. I get my entry here, and then price goes back down. Don't forget, guys, this is what this is. Um, um, based on this is based on what we are expecting so what we're expecting can easily easily change it is the market at the end of the day and that's why we need to also ensure that we're getting updates how do you get updates to so this live market analysis session that we have discussed kindly join the uh telegram group join the telegram group for beginners or whatever the case might be so that we can discuss this much better this here is a fantastic risk to reward ratio risk to reward because at the end of the day your reward must be by far greater than your risk right and this one the risk involved here for this reward uh here is not the best for me i repeat the risk here involved for this reward is not the best i prefer a risk where i enter here and i can exit over here you can see that this will be a whole lot of uh, profit at the end of the day, All right? So this is Euro USD. Do we have any news coming out for euros or for USD today? Can you guys refresh my memory? I already have it up there, so I already know the answer. But we're asking you to be sure that you are together with us. Is there any news from the calendar that we just looked at now that has to do with euros or has to do with USD for today? Anybody? If you answer fine, if you don't answer fine, we would give you the information that is needed and then hopefully everybody takes advantage of it. Okay, and uh, you said no, you said no. This is coming from Aim Ochechuku and Israel Bulus. Okay, no problem. Okay, and also Victor Elisha to said no as well. Okay, so now let me quickly say that again. Based on what we have over here, you can see uh, we ask a question, you like to enter here because you give us more profit at the end of the day. But the question we just ask is, do we have any news, right, coming out today for euros and for USD? And we have a lot of people saying no, and that is absolutely correct. Please take note of the one coming out tomorrow, CPI. It tends to be a bit more volatile than other. So you need to be careful with the news, the USD, uh, CPI, consumer price index data coming out tomorrow, All right? So as I said, I for one, guys, you can do a screenshot of this, or if you want me to do a screenshot, let me know. If you want me to save the charts that we're talking about based on where to enter, let me know. You can form as a form of um, refresher for you, right? And if you don't want me to do that, no problem. I will not save the screenshot. So now let me know as I'm gonna clean this one up and we're gonna continue because looking for opportunities this is how trading is a lot of people don't understand the business of trading first of all what you are supposed to do is to conduct your analysis look for where you can enter the market and then after looking for where you can enter the market like we did on this chart that we have in front of us where to enter the market on this chart we looked at this area here you can see we looked at this area here for me that is where to enter here for me this is a bit too close Right, it might get here and then bounce down. No worries, even if I miss the opportunity here. But I like to uh, stick to my strategy, stick to my rules, which is very key, very, very important. So, this is what we have for the Euro USD. Let's flip over to the next one GPUSD. Don't forget, GPUSD, whatever instrument you're looking at, always ensure that there is no news coming up around the corner that can cause some issues in the market. Now, this is the um, GPUSD, what I'd like to see, you can see it's presently sitting on this area of support. If you scroll to the left hand side, you can see some areas of support here where price struggled, but it's still um, acted or it's still is acting as support over here. Don't forget the trend here is a downtrend and the trend is your friend, right? So for this one, where I would like to enter also is price coming back to this area. I'd like to enter here for a sell and then take it back down. So this is a good one also 
for us to be able to take advantage of. Don't forget, trading is a patience game. You need to be able to exercise a whole lot of patience. You need to be patient for the trade opportunities to come your way. You need to be patient while on that trade. I need to be patient after that trade as well. So everything, you'll notice that there's patience in between, right? Great. So this is another one for the GPPUSD H1 against tomorrow, that is, right? That's GPUSD. So then let's move over to NZD USD. You can see I have them aligned over here because I've gone through them. And these are more or less my watch list for next week. These are the ones I'm watching for next week, by the way. So over here, you can see the trend is down on this NZD USD, which stands for the Kiwi. Now, one good area to look for sell positions here, one good area to enter the market rather, is look for sell positions in that area where you can see in the past, it acted as support, acted as support, and it acted as support. As was from the news I've talked about for the non-farm payroll, I believe it was 5.17 or 5.11 or 5.7K that we had as opposed to uh, uh, the forecast, which was 1.93, right? So looking at what we have about it, this is what I personally would like to see. Let me know whether I should do a screenshot and send it to you guys after. This is what I would like to see. I like price to push higher to this area of resistance, price to push, push higher to this area of resistance. And then the sellers do what they jump in after a trigger and they take it back down, right? So that is it. In every trading, in every business, everybody wants to make money, not just in trading, but in any business out there, our main, main end goal, our end goal is what is the result of making money at the end of the day. But then before you can get to the area of results, you need to be able to what? You need to be able to put in the work, you need to be able to uh, conduct a lot of uh, uh, analysis, wait for the market to come your way and so on, right? So now looking at the next one, let's quickly bridge through the next one, ADUSD. What I would like to see personally is price getting to this area and then selling to take it back down. So this is for me where I would like to enter the market at this area here, right? This is our analysis for today, for tomorrow. Now this is the AUDUSD. Now, the reason why I'm not even looking at the market getting here today, because number one, we do not have a catalyst. We don't have a catalyst like, maybe we could have a breaking news or something that could cause this, this present candle or the next one or whatever to spike and push higher to that area of resistance, right? So that is something that we need to uh, pay attention to. But then this is the area of interest where I would like to jump into uh, uh, here, by the way, here's the area of interest, where I would like to jump in and then to show you that this is what you should be doing, how to take advantage of the market by understanding the support and then the resistance areas. And when the price comes back here, and when the price comes back here again, you know what to do accordingly. So um, let's bridge through the remaining. Let's quickly bridge through the remaining. Guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask as well. Bridge through the remaining. This is the USDJPY. USDJPY, as you can see, unique. This was a form of uh, resistance, resistance price book out here. You can see based on the non farm payroll data, price came back here, support, bounce, 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 and it bounced about here. And it has gotten back to this height here of what? Of resistance here, right? Where you could easily be looking for sell opportunities. You're looking for sell opportunities on this chart, the USDJPY simply means that you are a uh, counter trend trader. You're trying to go against the prevailing trend, right? But because if you try to go against the prevailing trend, I'll just quickly hint you, it is very dangerous. It is not advisable. Do not do it and so on, right? Going against the trend, it's, it, it's um, has to do with a, a you know more risk, more risk, and also uh, precision, right? More risk and more precision. So don't do it for now, please. Trend trading is better advisable, right? But then if you're looking to counter trend this, you can look forward to selling over here, over here at these highs, right? But just make sure you have your trigger, maybe your news, the news is in, the, is in your favor for that day and so on. So this is the USD JPY. Let me clean this up quickly. USD JPY, and then this is the Bitcoin. Uh, we're not sure that we have some Bitcoin traders here. If you're a Bitcoin trader, please signify by typing in the chat section, right? So that we can be putting up more posts at the end of the day for Bitcoin, right? So if you look over here, also 
this one, the market is going down on this Bitcoin as we just mentioned. You would like to see, or I would like to see price come back to this area, enter to sell, and then it pushes lower and lower, right? Once again, if you look, we have support, 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 and the support over here. If the price should come back to this area over here, then this will be a first time to this area. And you can see there is no uh, area here that's acted as resistance over here. This will be a first time, which is rather significant, right? So this is what I'm looking out for also for the Bitcoin. So guys can do a screenshot if you want. I repeat, you can do a screenshot if you want so that it can help you later when the price eventually gets there. Okay, we have a comment coming in here. Um, or rather we have, uh, sorry, I have another comment I have not addressed coming from Eric Favor and also Israel Bulus. Uh, okay, great. Ayim Uchuchuku said, I'm also, I'm also, okay, you also trade the cryptocurrency. Okay, great. Now, since we have a few more to, you know, finish up on Eurocard, Gold, and GPP, JPY, right, based on the opportunities, much earlier, we're looking at what happened last week, and we're looking at what should happen this week, and that will help us to position ourselves accordingly, to trade the market the proper way, and of course, to make pips and then to make money at the end of the day, right? So let's clean this up. We've shown you here uh, how to uh, look at the chart, where to enter the market as well. So this is the arrow card. You can see arrow card, um, whether you trade it or not, it's always good for learning purposes. You can see arrow card here. Look at what happened in the past. Let me quickly show you guys. Look at this. This acted as a form of support, support. You can see it breathed out here. But then this area, this area here, it acted as resistance and then dropped nicely. As it dropped nicely, this was what happened last week, by the way, here. As it dropped last, uh, nicely last week, right, at this area here, what am I looking out for? I'm looking out for something here as well, right? That means that I'm expecting that price from here where it is to push higher to this area of resistance. This acted as support earlier. You might push higher to this area of resistance we get our entry here and then we take it back down to the lows at this point, right? I hope what we're talking about now based on, first of all, we're looking at what happened last week. Now we're looking at what is happening this week. This is a brand new week. And of course, brand new is equals to brand new pips, right? We are going to have plenty of pips, PIP in this week, and they're going to be brand new, right? This is what we're talking about here for the Euro card. You can do a screenshot. And then we'll continue from there and look at the remaining, answer the questions that you have already stated. Uh, guys, it's meant to be one hour, so apologies a bit. We might go past a bit by one uh, hour, maybe one hour, 10 minutes or so. This is gold over here. This is gold. And for this gold, you can see price seems to be sitting on this area here of support as it keeps on bouncing. But look at this, there's a lot of uh, indecision here. Well, ideally, as this, um, uh, the directional bias for this gold is down, as you can see, what we would like to see would be a pullback, which is, that, which is a retracement or a, uh, uh, what we, what else do you call a comeback, a comeback effect, right, on the market. So we're looking for a pullback to this point here that acted as support earlier, and then you get your entry here and then take it back down, right? And then per venture, if it pushes higher to this place, the higher it pushes, the more profit you can uh, get at the end of the day and sell, and then it gets back to the lows here. So this is the goal that we've just looked at as well. I'm going to also try and do some screenshots and then post them up on the Telegram group. So if you're not on the Telegram group, kindly try to join as soon as possible. It's another area for learning, it's another area where we discuss and so on at the end of the day, okay? Um, let's quickly flip through this. The last one is GBP, JPY, GBP, JPY. You can see GBP, JPY. Uh, this is what I would like to see as it's getting closer. I'd like to see price get to this area here that has acted in the past as support and it acted in the past as, uh, sorry, it was resistance. This is support here. Support, you can see support as well. Support here. This one here was in a resistance. So, Looking at this area here, what we would probably like to see here is price approach the area, right? Approach the area, because you need to look at how price uh, approaches areas. Apart from the approaching, 
We also take note of the reaction. How does it react to that area? The reaction and then the entry based on the trigger back to this point here or even back to the entire lows here. If you look at this very well, this is actually a very good trade because if you enter here, maybe your stop loss is here, your tape profit could be here, which is awesome. And then you could have another tape profit here. And that is why some traders also, they tend to do TP1, TP2, and TP3. You probably must have been hearing that in some uh, places, or maybe you already know that how to you know, manage your trades by using take profit, broken down take profit, or whatever the case may be. So this is TP1 and TP2. You could even have TP3 and TP4 going lower and lower and lower. So this is what we have also for GBP, JPY. So I'm going to do something now because of time. I'm going to quickly uh, scroll up and then look for comments that I haven't addressed yet. I remember the first one that we had was from Zacchaeus that said AED, JPY. So I'm going to use this, um, um, this same one here. I'm just going to click here and then look for AED, JPY on the... Uh, on the list of instruments, right? I'm going to look for AED JPY over here on the list. So let's go through all the A's that we have here and beautiful. This is AED JPY. So I'm going to click on this and then drag it inside. By the time I release my finger, it should give us the information of AED JPY H1, one hour. Okay, so this is what we have here. Beautiful. Beautiful. I don't know whether you guys can see what I'm seeing, but I have already seen something. And I have seen something over here. I'm going to draw it here. And this is what I've seen. I've seen this area here. You can see it's actually a support. Support. There was some breaches here, a little support here. This area to resistance. That means that, that means that, listen guys, that means that automatically this area should, should act as, what should act as resistance, right? And the actual resistance in the price should go down at the end of the day. Right? This is something that is very important for us to be able to read and understand. I believe somebody said something earlier about not being able to read the market. Right? So I'm going to do a screenshot of this as well. If you guys are interested, I can post them up on the Telegram groups. If you're not in the Telegram group, do well to join. You can also reach out to your account manager, reach out to the person that sent you the link, and then the, uh, uh, the link for the Telegram will be sent to you for you to join and then you can pay attention to this. You can see that this candle is looking like a big one, looking very fierce, but don't worry. Don't let price scare you, right? Stick to your goals of the area as we have just looked at the area of interest over here. Stick to your goals because it might just push higher at little bridge, do something like this and then drop, right? Don't forget, this area that we're talking about are also known as what? They're also known as price points. So they're called areas. So I can, I can as well, you know, make a wider area here, right? Which is going to represent our area of resistance. And of course, if you look at this chart also, this here would be our what? Our take profit. So you can see that this is actually a good trade for us to be looking at now. This is a good trading opportunity for us to be looking at now. It just boils down to waiting for the right price action trigger. And then we pull the trigger and then we'll wait for what we are pulled to give us whether we are right or whether we are wrong. But make sure that all the parameters are, you know, on point with respect to your uh, analysis, with respect to the risk to reward ratio, especially this, sort of the risk reward ratio that will help you to know the trace, the proper trace to take and then know the proper, the uh, other side, the trace to avoid as well. So I'm going to clean this up here. This is the AED JPY. Let me ask the person, I believe that was Mr. Zacchaeus, if I'm not mistaken. Are you okay with that? Hope you're okay. Okay, he said, I'm on this trade already. Let us know what you are doing. Are you buying or are you selling? You need to understand the trend as well. You need to understand the time frame that you are looking at the market as well. Because you have different times that will give you different interpretations. And I will always say it is best for you to stick to that time frame that you are used to, right? Okay, so I'm just scrolling up trying to get the remaining comments I have here. I know some comments are also dropping in now so that we can round up in good time. Uh, EGA Michael said gold. We already talked about gold just not too long ago where I said based on the gold um, and, and based on gold, let me just click on it here. Let me just clear this drawings here. Based on this gold over here, 
Now see we said price is sitting here and what we'd like to see would be a pullback, right? A retracement from this lows to this point here because of an entry and then it pushes back lower or gets back to this area of interest, enter and then it pushes lower at the end of the day, right? So that is gold. Um, so we've answered Zacchaeus, ADJ, and IJ Michael for gold. And let's scroll down some more, read more comments. Uh, Eric Faber said, what if price breaks above the area of interest on ADUSD? Let me cross back to ADUSD. This is ADUSD here. What if, the question now is, what if, listen guys, what if price breaks above the area of interest, like over here, if it breaks above, that means either you had a small loss for it to go down, either you had a small loss or you did not have any loss whatsoever, right? Because if it's going to break this area, it should give you trigger. And trigger has to do with the price action candlesticks. You could have the popular ones known as the engulfing, known as the pin bar, known as the hammer, and they're all bearish, by the way, since you like to sell here. You can have them as the bearish pin, bearish hammer, bearish engulfing here, for it to enter and then it goes down. But if it breaks this area, that's what we said, you must also pay attention to the reaction, how the price reacts. If it breaks this area and pushes higher, then of course, this trade is more or less, uh, uh, what's the word? This trade is more or less no more a, a viable one. There's no more one that we need to concentrate on. And then we do what we can easily move over to another one uh, over here. Let me read the many comments I have here. Uh, Israel Bulu said, so what happens if price did not reach, listen, did not reach our entry point today and we have a high impact news tomorrow? Does this mean we wait until after the news before we trade? No, not exactly. It depends on the scenario. You usually have different scenarios at the end of the day. I repeat, it depends on the scenario. There's some scenarios, right? I repeat, there's some scenarios where um, um, based on your question, there's a scenario where you can get an entry before the news. You get an entry before the news, you can easily wait to see the outcome of the news and see the reaction and then see the direction as well. Because at the end of the day, directional bias is very important in trading. You can see we've been talking about directional bias over here, you know, want to sell, to take it back down, which is directional bias of down and so on, right? So now, um, to answer that question again, Israel Bolusa, what happens if price did not reach? Oh, sorry, did not reach. I think I was answering for, okay, did not reach. Okay, I think I was answering another one. Okay, if price did not reach, did not reach our entry point and we have a high impact news. Okay, let me give you a scenario. Price could be going up like this and then it goes down. Maybe it did not reach. Well, as it gets back to this point, it goes back to this point again and it can give you an entry here to drop down. So all you have to do is just exercise patience. If it gets there, fine. If it doesn't get there, fine. You would always, always find another uh, uh, instrument that price will act accordingly. And that's what happened last week. If you look at last week, where we have the Euro USD here, you can see that price did not quite get to this area of uh, a resistance. It didn't quite get there. But the GPP USD, you can see it got there and then went down nicely, right? So. You must always have your list of instruments, have the list of instruments that you're watching, right? Because that list of instruments you're watching would help you to know which ones to focus on. Like for me, I focus on the majors, like Euro USD, GPUSD, AUD, AUD USD, NZD USD, basically the ones that we have in front of us that we would normally talk about. Because, because I am a trader, I'm not just a trainer, right? That's the good thing with 10 trade, we're traders. Because as I am a trader, I'm looking for trading opportunities. So I'm showing you the trading opportunities on majority of the instruments that I trade, right? So I just answered that one for Israel Bulus. I hope that's okay. I am Uche, Uche, Uche Chuku said, um, I also trade uh, cryptocurrency. That's great. Sonia Obasi said, what's the correlation between JPY, CHEF, and CAD with XAU, Euro, and Pound? I'm not really sure if there's a correlation between this one that you mentioned. What I'll tell you, of course, you should already know that they are all major currencies. That's number one. As a major currency, you know you are going to be paying one currency against another. And this one that you have mentioned, uh, it is CHEF, not it's a CHF, not CHEF. That's another type of CHEF. <laughs> so now, 
USD here is the uh, missing link, as I can see. The USD versus every other uh, currency here will give you majors, will give you the major currency pairs, right? So USD versus all these other currencies that you mentioned here are the major currency pairs, right? That we can easily trade. Then Stephen Ojo said, is it me? I can't hear the host, okay? Um, I'm just reading that now, which is about eight minutes ago as I'm scrolling down. Uh, Stephen Ojo, for you guys, I'm sure you guys can hear because I can see some other comments coming in. Zach, you said, I'm on this trade already. That's after Mr. Um, what's his name? Let me try and scroll up a bit. That's after Mr. Stephen Ojo's comment. Mr. Stephen Ojo, if you can hear us now, let us know. And then Zakir said, I'm on this trade already. I'm selling, okay? Um, that trade, I believe is ADJPY. You said you're selling, is it ADJPY? Who is that, Mr. Zakir? Let me scroll up a bit. Sorry, just a second, Mr. Zakir. Is it ADJPY? Okay, I think it's ADJPY. You said you're already selling. Hmm, I don't know where you're selling from, but you might probably be having a drawdown. Are you, have, are you, in, uh, are you having a loss at the moment? For Mr. Zakios, I believe this is ADGPY you are selling. Uh, as you said, I'm on this trade already. I'm selling using one hour time from analysis. Okay, great. Also using one hour time from analysis. Let us know whether it's this instrument or it's another one that you are in already. Israel Bulu said, noted, and Stephen Ojo said, it is cool now. Okay, great. That means that it was from your own end, and then everything is good to go now. So if you look at what we have done, guys, we're going to run up within the next one minute or two. But if you look at what we have done now, we have first of all talked about, you know, the trading from last week. I repeat, we uh, first of all talked about trading from last week, right? What happened last week? And then we're looking at what happened this or what's going to happen this week, what's going to happen this week, also using the calendar as a gauge for volatility we've just finished talking about what's going to uh, happen what to expect for this week so guys kindly join the telegram group we have uh two telegram groups we have a general one and they have one for those that fund a minimum of hundred dollars so if you fund a minimum of hundred dollars then you're entitled to that one talk to your account manager so you can join us on that and then for the one-on-one -on -one, i repeat for the one-on-one -on -one 30 minute session with myself all you have to do is to fund your account. This is why I'm saying fund your account. Why? Because as you are funding the account, it shows, it, it allows you to be eligible for what we are offering. And then it's going to help you to place that trade at the end of the day. If you don't fund your live account, then how will you trade? You'll just be on demo and demo and demo. And trust me, I have met a lot of people that have been on demo trading for way too long. Some of them have been on demo for three years seven years, nine years, and then I ask them, do you want to become a professional demo trader? And then they smile, and then they know the needful, okay? And then Zaki said, one is here to activate, I said, while the other is in loss. Yes, I already had an idea that it's in loss. So look at the size of these candles that are coming in on this one hour time frame. And then the market here is just getting to this tip over here, they to the tip of uh, uh, the information for uh, today. This is the high of today, right? So if you look very well, now it is reacting. Look at it. Look at what's happening on this camera. It is showing that there's some evidence, some little evidence at least of sellers. It's just to know how much sellers are there at this level. For you to know that you have to pick the levels the proper way. If you pick a level that is not that strong, of course, you don't have enough sellers there and vice versa. Okay, um, Stephen Ojo said, I don't know my account manager. You can send me a private message over here. You can send a private message of your um, um, client ID. Send a message of your client ID, and then I'll try to get your account manager to give you a call. So, guys, as we're rounding up now, if you have a quick final question, please feel free to ask. And then also, if you are more or less interested in the one-on-one -on -one session, 30-minute session with myself, all you have to do is to fund your account right phone your account a minimum of five hundred dollars and then we'll set something up for you right you can also reach out to me as well or reach out to the person that sent you this link right who would, who would happen to be your account manager uh, sorry your 
uh, partner, the person that sent you this link for you to join us, will most likely be your partner. We're going to be talking about different ways to make money this week as well. So I'd advise you to make sure that you are connected to what we have for you for the week, right? So that you can take advantage, right? So if no further questions, uh, Stephen Ojo, please send me your ID, send a private message to your ID, with your ID, your client ID, and I'll try to locate your uh, your account manager that should hopefully give you a call sooner than later. Well, I want to say thank you guys, even though for that question, this has been a live market analysis session where we have looked at what happened in the past, right? And then also what's going to most likely happen in the future, also taking into consideration the news coming out today, tomorrow, uh, and of course, throughout the week as well, that will help us to know how to approach the market, how to you know enter or exit and so on. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. I can see you've, uh, that's Steven Ojo, sent me his details privately. Thank you for that. As you send me your details, I'm going to uh, try to follow up with that so that your account manager could reach out to you sooner than later. But guys, if you're interested in the one, is there anybody here interested in the one-on-one 30-minute -on -one session with myself? Let me know. It would be a minimum of $500 for you to be able to join. I repeat it to be a minimum of $500 for you to be able to join. And if you happen to fund $1,000, then you'll be in the presence of myself. That's a quick session. And then also Mr. Victor, uh, who happens to be the country director said will also get involved in that as well, right? So let's know what you've been interested in and how we can help you out. One quick question, one quick question, one quick question. Do you need any assistance? If yes, let us know exactly where you might need some form of assistance, some form of mentorship or whatever the case might be. We are rounding up now. This is past the one hour marker. We're rounding up now. So as we will be rounding up, right? I repeat, as we're rounding up now, you have any area that you might need assistance that you are struggling with, let us know now. And if none, then no problem, we'll call it a day. You can as well always reach out to me at a much later time. So on behalf of 10 Trade, I, Tolu, would like to say thank you guys for joining us. It has definitely been a good one. And of course, take note of all of these charts that we have what that we have drawn, right? I'll try to post them up on the, uh, what's the name? I'll try to post them up on the Telegram group for us to study not just to study, but also to pay attention to what happens to them going into tomorrow, going into uh, uh, the next day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and so on. It's for the week, right? Okay, great. Um, so as like I said, everybody needs assistance, e.g. me, but I'll chat you up soon. No problem. Guys, chat me up. When you chat me up, please give me some time. I'm going to respond immediately, but of course, I'll get across your messages. So please do not be angry with me if I don't reply immediately. There's some things that would not allow me to, that could easily hinder me from replying immediately. As an example, I could easily be in another session after this, please. Yes, I could easily be in another session after this, right? So I want to say thank you. I'm going to be closing this uh, platform in a bit. I want to say thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you.